This is section 9.5, talking about congruence. So remember, when we talk about congruence, we're talking about the same size and the same shape. Okay, so congruence really means equal. So what we, our notation for congruence, and you guys, notation is so very, very important that you're telling me if it's a line, you would do line AB. If it's a segment, you would do segment AB. If it's a ray, you would do ray AB. Okay, there are totally different things. So if you're just telling me AB, I don't know what you're talking about. So a lot of you on, on your homework, I had to fix that. So make sure that you are doing the right notation. But anyways, notation for congruence is when we use this symbol here, equal sign with a squiggly on top. That means congruent. So that was kind of a review. Uh, new is congruent polygons. So that means the corresponding parts, the same sides, or not the same sides, but the same, well, basically the same parts of the triangle are equal to each other. So an example of that would be if we had triangle and another triangle. Okay, this is triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Okay, so we have our two triangles. I'm gonna, I need to move this up here a little bit. And what we know is that the corresponding parts have to have the same measure. So that means these two sides have to be congruent. That means these two sides have to be congruent. Three lines, three lines, that means the three liners are congruent. Two liners are congruent, as are these two. And we know that this is a right angle. That was already in there, I forgot to put it in. Okay, so we know that's a right angle. So our congruence statement Our congruence statement, or how we write that these two triangles are congruent, is we would say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle. So we did ABC, so that means we'd have to start with F, E, D. Okay, it does matter the order you put them in. If you're going to start out here, then we have to start over here. Then you're going to go up to the top, go up to the top. Then we're going to go by the right angle, go by the right angle. Okay? <coughs> so that's how we write the congruent statements. So now let's talk about corresponding corresponding parts. Okay? So that is means that angle A is congruent with angle F. Angle B is congruent with angle E. Angle C is congruent with angle D. Okay, we this one's the easiest to tell because we know that they're right by the right angle. Then we can say, well, we've got two lines of congruence here. Then we have our B's on top of them, okay? So we just really have to make sure we're paying close attention. Don't just write angle B is congruent to angle F because that is not true. So then we could also say that line segment AB, okay, AB, so we have the three liner, is congruent to line segment FE. Okay, again, we have to make sure we're putting these in the same order. If I'm going to start down at F, I have to go up to E. I can't do EF. And line segment BC is congruent, so we've got BC, with ED. Line segment ED. <coughs> line segment AC is congruent, so we've got AC with 
FD. We're ending at that right angle. Fine segment FD. Okay, so that's how we have to make sure that we're writing these. Again, the notation is so important. Angle A, line segment AB. Okay, I don't want to go like this AB because this line AB does not go on forever. It stops at point A and point B. It is no more. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. All right, so given that triangle, this will be kind of your, your directions. Given that triangle MNP is congruent to triangle QLK, list the congruent and corresponding parts. <coughs> List the congruent and corresponding parts. Okay, so that's what we had to do. Our congruent statement, uh, we already have our congruent statement, never mind. We already have our congruent statement that triangle MNP is congruent to triangle QLK. So now we just have to list our corresponding parts. So we know that angle M is congruent with angle Q because they came first. Angle N is congruent with angle L. Angle P is congruent to angle K. Okay, so we just do the first is congruent with the first. Second congruent with the second. Third congruent with the third. Now we get a little bit trickier where we have to do lines. Okay, so if I have line segment MN, I know that's going to be congruent with line segment QL. Put my line segment on top. If I have line segment MN, or sorry, NP, that's going to be congruent with line segment LK. Okay, so now if I look back, I had AC last time was congruent to FD. So that means I took my first letter and my last letter and my first letter and my last letter because that's going to make the last part that comes together. Okay, so I can say line segment MP is congruent with line segment MPQK. They are congruent, okay? So again, we can know that it, writing the triangle exactly how it, it is on there is very important. We don't, want, we don't want to do triangle MPN because then that's going to miss our congruent and corresponding parts up. Okay, so showing that two triangles are congruent, we have three different methods. These are things you need to keep in your brain because these are things I did in high school. So that means you will also need to do them in high school when you take geometry. Okay, so this is something to really pay close attention to and make sure you understand. So our first method to know that two triangles are congruent or same sides, same angles, are as if all the sides are congruent. Side, side, side is what we would call this. To prove it, we would put SSS. Okay, it's easier to write SSS than side, side, side. So if this side's congruent to this side, this side's congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side, we know we could say that these triangles are congruent. Okay, so if, we, if they give us and let us know that all the sides are the same, not the same, but that they're, they're congruent with a corresponding side, then we know that they are congruent. And by corresponding, I mean that this side is congruent to this side. Okay, Con or corresponding means that they're the same side and they're congruent with each other. They're, this, they're the same length. Another method is <coughs> side angle side, or SAS. Okay, so side angle side would look something like this. If they gave you a triangle, they told you this, oh, two triangles, 
gave you two triangles. They told you this side was congruent with this side. They told you this angle was congruent with this angle. And they told you this side was congruent with this side. Okay, so we've got a side, angle, side. Okay, the angle has to be between the two congruent sides. If I told you this angle was congruent with this angle, does not work because it's not located between the two sides. Okay, so it has to be uh, exactly side, angle, side. It could be this side, angle, side, or this side, or sorry, this side, angle, side, but the angle has to be between the two congruent sides. Okay, so that would be SAS. Then we have angle, side, angle, which I'm Guessing you can probably guess what that would look like. So that would be where we would have an angle is congruent to this angle. This side is congruent to this side and this angle is congruent to this angle. Again, the side, the congruent sides have to be between the two congruent angles. Okay, that's ASA. Okay, so we have our three methods. R, S, 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 A, S, A, S, A. Just make sure you don't spell a bad word with what we're, we're doing side angle sides. Okay, make sure you don't spell a bad word because that's not one of our methods. All right, let's go to the next one. Identify the congruent triangles. List the congruent and cons corresponding parts. Write a congruence statement and justify the congruence using side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle. Okay, so our first example is this. This is kind of using those methods. Okay, so again, get those methods in your head. So we have one that looks like this. Okay, and here's the deal, you guys. If I don't draw it that they look the same, you have to look at the markings on it, okay? So I've got this angle is congruent to this angle. Oh, sorry, this is angle E, or sorry, point P, point E. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. Point D, because we are using capital letters. This is a point C, point B, point A. Okay, we know that these two angles are congruent. We know that these two sides are congruent. And we know that these two angles are congruent. Okay, we also know that our right angles are congruent, but that doesn't really matter to us because it doesn't. Okay, so let's first list the congruent corresponding parts. Okay, so we know that angle E is congruent to angle A. We know angle D is congruent to angle B. And we know angle C is congruent to angle B. Ooh, C. Angle C is congruent to itself because it is the same angle. <coughs> Ooh. <laughs> we better write that one a little bit different. Just to be clear, angle DCE, DCE, because that would be DCE, is congruent to angle ACB. Okay, so those are our congruent angles. Now we need to list our congruent sides. Line segment AC is congruent with line segment EC. Line segment DC is congruent to line segment BC. Line segment ED is congruent to line segment EDAB. So there is our corresponding parts. Now we have to write our congruence statement, which says triangle, I'm going to start with E, D, C is congruent 
to triangle ABC. And then we just need to write because. So we have angle, side, angle. So we would write A, S, A. Angle, side, angle. Go back and make sure that's one of our congruent our statement of congruences. Uh, how to show that they're congruent. Yes, that's number three on our list, so that one works. Okay, part number two, or, tri or problem number two. All right, we have a triangle that looks like this. You know this is a right and this is a right. You know this is W, B, X. Point W, point B, point X, and up on top, better move her down here, we have point A. Okay, so for this one, I, there aren't any markings to give it away really easily. So we're really going to have to think about this one. So let's list the congruent and corresponding parts. We know that angle, well, if they are congruent, we don't know if these triangles are congruent, but if they are, we could say that angle WAB is congruent to angle XAB. Okay, and the reason why I didn't do angle A is a congruent to angle A because there's two angle A's. So we have to be specific with that one. Then we can just go angle W is congruent with angle X and angle, well, B we have to switch, we have to do the same thing. ABW is congruent with angle ABX. Okay, ABW and ABX is how we would write those. Now let's do our lines of congruence. Line AB is congruent to line AB. We know that because it's the same line, so that's gonna be one of our hints. Line segment AW is congruent with line segment AX. Line segment WB is congruent to line segment XB. So here's our statements of congruence. Okay, so then we have to write our, sta our congruence statement. Oh, sorry, these are, what are these called? Corresponding parts. Our, our statement of congruence is that triangle ABB is congruent to triangle AXB. Now we have to figure out why are they congruent. Okay, I know that this angle is congruent to this angle, right? Because they're both 90 degrees. I know that, sorry, this angle was already given to us that it was congruent, I forgot to write that in. So we know that these two angles are congruent. And we know that these two angles are congruent. Okay, but two angles, AA, that's not one of our statements of congruence. We either need SAS, ASA, or SSS. We don't know if these two, if line A, W, and AX are for sure congruent. We don't know W, B, and BX for sure are congruent, but we do know that, hey, this is the same line. AB is congruent to AB because it's the same line. So we do know that A, S, A, that proves congruence. So we would write because Angle, side, angle. That's our, our proving. We have an angle that's congruent, we have a side that's congruent, and another angle, and the sides between the two angles. So that's how we can prove congruence for triangle two. And here's our last problem. Ooh, this one looks fun. Okay, so we go over here. Looks different, I should say, not necessarily fun. We'll have to see. Okay, again, don't go by how I draw it. Go by the, the lines of congruence they give us. We know that these two are congruent. 
these two lines. Uh, this line is the line that goes straight down. This line is this line right here. Okay, so we know those two lines are congruent. We know that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. Okay, and that's all. Oh, then they tell us our letters. J, K, gets this point, and this point. This point is M. This point right here is L. Okay, and it looks like we even get this point, which I don't know why they would tell us this point, but it's point N just for fun, I guess. Okay, now I want to draw this a little bit better so we can visualize it better. So let's say we have our yellow triangle that is this triangle right here. Okay, so we have this yellow triangle and then we have the green triangle which goes here, here, and here. Okay, so we have a yellow triangle, we have that green triangle right there. All right, so here's what I'm going to do first. I have to list my congruent, sorry, congruent corresponding parts. So I'm going to say that angle J is congruent to angle K because they told us with the little red marks that those two angles are congruent. Then we can guess angle M is congruent to angle L. So we have J and K, we have L and M. And J, oh we have two angle J's and two angle K's, so we better Angle N, K, J. So this should be angle N, K, J is congruent N, K, J to angle N, J, K. Okay, and then we have angle M, J, K, so I'm getting this one, M, J, K, is congruent to L, K, J, L, K, J, okay, so now I think we've gotten them all, then we could say line J, K is congruent to line J, K, we know that line MK is congruent to line LJ. And then line LK, did I do it? Nope. Line LK is congruent to line MJ. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm picking the ones that are actually the same. There's my corresponding parts. Now my statement of congruence is that triangle M, K, J is congruent to triangle L, so an M, K, J, L, J, K. Okay, so here's what I've got in common. I'm going to try to pick a color that really will stick out, hopefully. Mm, let's go with purple. Okay, so I have this side, which is kind of the point of this triangle. I wonder if I can make these thicker. Yes, okay. So I've got this one right here, which is the side of this triangle. I've got this angle right here, which is the side of this triangle. So we've got angle, angle. We know that this is congruent to this side, so we've got side, angle, and then we know side JK is congruent to side JK, so we've got side, angle, side. So when we write our because statement, we can just write because 
of side, this side and this side, angle and this angle, and this side on the bottom down here because of the side, angle, side. Okay, that's all that I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Make sure you come in and get any questions answered.